There are many ways to monetize your Python skills, and using AI tools makes it possible for complete beginners to start making money too. One of the most profitable approaches is building bots and automation tools. Right now, there are thousands of companies worldwide desperately searching for Python developers, spending tens of thousands of dollars on recruiters just to find the right talent. But what if I told you that there's a way to flip this entire system and make money as a complete beginner, even if you've never written a line of code before. Here's the thing that most people don't realize. While everyone's focused on learning Python the traditional way, AI tools have completely changed the game. You can now build professional automation tools that companies will pay thousands for without spending years mastering programming fundamentals. In the next 15 minutes, I'm going to show you exactly how to create a LinkedIn job scraper that automatically finds the best developers for companies, turning one used to be a $50,000 recruiting expense into a simple Python automation. We'll use Claude Code, an AI assistant that writes the code for us, so even complete beginners can follow along and build something valuable. By the end of this video, you'll have a working application that companies desperately need. And more importantly, you'll understand exactly how to turn your Python skills into real income. Because here's what's crazy. This single automation could easily be worth $10,000 to the right company. And I'm about to show you how to build it step by step. Let's dive in. Every great Python project starts with the right step. It's what separates smooth progress from constant debugging later on. Getting your environment ready early means everything you build afterward runs cleaner and faster. So before we jump into coding, we'll take a few minutes to prepare the tools that will make the rest of this project effortless. For this project, we'll be using Claude Code inside Visual Studio Code, an AI-powered coding assistant that helps write, debug, and refine code directly in your editor. It basically turns your IDE into a coding partner that saves you hours of manual setup and troubleshooting. First, open Visual Studio Code on your computer. If you don't have it yet, just install it from the official website. Then, open the terminal inside VS Code and install Claude Code using the standard command. It's shown on the screen right now. After the installation finishes, run Claude Code by typing Claude in the terminal, and it will prompt you to log into your Claude account. By the way, you'll need a paid plan for the step since free users don't have access to the coding assistant yet. Now, once you've logged in, you'll notice a new Claude Code panel appearing inside VS Code. That's where all the action will happen, where we'll be giving prompts, generating Python scripts, and building the entire LinkedIn job scraper from scratch. Just like that, our setup is complete. Claude code is active, the workspace is ready, and we can move straight into writing our first lines of code. All right, every app needs a starting point, and this is where ours begins. Before we can scrape any jobs or analyze data, we need the actual interface the window users will interact with. It's the first real step in turning an idea into something tangible you can open, click, and see working on screen. Inside Visual Studio Code, with Claude code already open from the last setup, let's give it a clear instruction. The goal here is to create the basic structure for our LinkedIn job scraper, a simple, functional desktop app built with Python. Let's type in this prompt. Please create a Python desktop application for a LinkedIn job scraper. Please build the app's UI first before we build other functionality. Include input fields for job title and location a search button, and a display area where scraped job results will appear. After sending that prompt, Claude Code starts generating all the necessary files and code automatically. Once it's done, we can now run the Python file to test the setup. You should see a clean desktop window open with the first version of our app. For now, what we have is a simple but working interface. Input fields labeled for job title and location, a search button in the center, and a result section ready for data. It doesn't do any scraping yet, and the design is still pretty plain, but that's completely fine. What matters is that our structure is now in place, and we'll make it look well-built in the next step. Let's be honest, first impressions matter, even in software. Like what I said earlier, our app works, but it still looks like something straight out of a coding tutorial. It's functional, sure, but not something you'd actually want to show off. So in this part, we're giving it a proper makeover. We'll start again inside Claude Code. Open the chat panel and type in the next prompt. Please improve the application's design significantly. Give it a modern, professional look similar to popular job board websites. 
Use PyQt for the GUI. Include a clean search section with input fields for job title and location. Uh, filter drop-down options for job type and experience level, a prominent search button, and a well-organized results table with columns for job title, company, location, and posted date. Use a professional color scheme with blues and whites. Once you hit enter, Claude code takes over and starts refining everything behind the scenes, reorganizing the layout, improving spacing, and applying proper styling automatically. Once it's done, go ahead and run the app again. You'll immediately notice how much cleaner and more cohesive everything looks. If you run into any errors at this stage, don't panic. It's totally normal, I had to troubleshoot a few myself. Just describe the issue directly to Claude and it will usually fix it in seconds. That's one of the best parts of working with AI here. You're never really stuck. After a few quick fixes, the difference is night and day. The app now looks completely refreshed, clean, modern, and professional. The blue and white theme gives it a polished, software-grade look, and every element sits neatly in place. The search fields are easy to follow, the drop-down filters make refining results simple, and the table layout clearly displays each job's title, company, location, and date. But before we can start pulling job data from LinkedIn, we need to give our app the right tool for the job. Right now, the interface can't actually do anything yet. This step is all about setting up the backend or the engines that will handle web scrape, process data, and make everything work behind the scenes. Just like earlier, we'll do it inside Claude Code. Open the chat panel and type in this next prompt. Please install and configure all necessary web scraping libraries for our LinkedIn job scraper. Use Selenium for handling dynamic content loading and beautiful soup for parsing. Set up a proper user agent string to identify our scraper, configure Chrome driver for Selenium, and add appropriate delay mechanisms between requests to avoid being blocked by LinkedIn. Also add error handling for common scraping issues like timeouts and connection errors. Remember, we're scraping public LinkedIn job listings without login, so configure accordingly. Once you send a prompt, Claude will take care of everything automatically, installing the libraries, adding the imports, and creating the configuration files in the background. You won't see much change visually this time, since everything we're doing here happens in the codebase itself. After that, our app will be ready to connect to the web safely and efficiently. This step might not look exciting on screen, but it's the foundation that makes the scraping logic in the next part possible. Without it, the rest of the app wouldn't have anything to work with. At this point, we got the interface built and all the tools ready. So now, it's time to make the app actually do something. This is where we connect everything together and turn it into a working LinkedIn job scraper that pulls real listings based on user searches. It's the most important part of the entire build, and once it's working, you'll start seeing Seeing live data appear right inside your wrap. We'll start by asking Claude Code to build the main scraping logic. Please build the core scraping functionality. When the user clicks the search button, the app should scrape LinkedIn's public job listings based on the job title and location provided in the input fields. Extract job title, company name, location, preview description, whatever is publicly available, and posting date for each job listing. Display all the results in the table we created earlier. Add a loading indicator or progress message while scraping is in progress. Make sure to handle cases where no jobs are found or if LinkedIn blocks the request. And of course, Claude Code will handle everything again automatically, from building out the scraping logic, linking it to the interface, and to setting up how the data flows behind the scenes. This step can take a bit longer than the others, and that's normal. Scraping requires several moving parts to work together, and it might take a couple of refinements before everything runs smoothly. For a quick test run, let's try searching for something like Python Developer in New York City. After a few seconds, the app begins pulling live job listings directly from LinkedIn's public results. Then once it's done, you'll see all the listings displayed. Job titles, company names, locations, and posting dates all structured cleanly in your app's results table. And just like that, our scraper officially works. We built the main engine of your project, which is now a functional system that turns user searches into real, 
usable data. Remember, this tutorial only works with public LinkedIn listings. Nothing behind a login or paywall. Now that's important because it keeps our scraper both safe and ethical. We're not touching private endpoints, user data, or anything that violates LinkedIn's term. Always make sure your scraping stays within the rules. That means checking a site's robots.txt file before you start, spacing out requests with reasonable delays, and never overloading their servers. These small precautions prevent your IP from getting flagged and show respect for the platform's infrastructure. The goal here isn't to hack LinkedIn. It's to understand how public data can be used responsibly for research, automation, or portfolio projects. As long as you stick to open information and rate limits, you're building something valuable and completely above board. Now, when you're looking for jobs, scrolling through results isn't enough. What really helps is being able to organize them. People want to filter by what actually matters and save the listings that look promising. So here, we will add real filters and export options that make this tool something you can actually use day to day. Here's the exact prompt we'll give to Claude Cohn to make this happen. Please add export functionality so users can save all scraped jobs to a CSV file with a single button click. The CSV should include all job information in organized columns. Also, make the filter drop-down options we created earlier fully functional. Add filters for job type and experience level. When users select filters, the scraping should automatically incorporate those filters into the LinkedIn search. Add a clear filters button to reset everything back to default. After a quick run, everything connects perfectly. Let's try to search for software engineer jobs in LA. Let the scraper do its thing and within a few seconds, the results appear clean, filtered and ready to export. One tap on the export button and a CSV file downloads instantly, neatly organized with all job titles, companies and dates in separate columns. You just saw that we are not just pulling data anymore. We can also manage it, sort it, and save it for later. These filters and exports are aiding our simple scraper to become something people can rely on to actually track opportunities or research markets. Like what I said, the scraper already finds, filters, and exports job listings, but it's missing something that makes it truly useful for everyday job hunting. If you've ever applied to multiple roles, you know how fast things get messy. You forget which listings you've checked, which ones you meant to revisit, or where you've already sent applications. So let's fix that. Let's tell Claude Code to please add a double-click feature where you Users can double click on any job row in the table to view all available job details in a separate pop up window or side panel. It'll show the full preview description, company info, and include a button that opens the actual LinkedIn job posting in the user's default web browser. Also, add a status column to the table with a drop down in each row where users can mark jobs as not reviewed, interested, applied, or not interested. These statuses should persist during the session and be included when exporting to CSV so users can track their job hunting process. After running that, let's try to search for UX designer in Chicago. And there you go. Results show up with a new status column next to each listing. I can mark each one as interested or applied and the choices sync even if I refresh or move around the table. If I double click a job, a new pop-up appears showing all the details the company name, posting date, and a button that opens the original LinkedIn listing in one click. What's great about this update is that it bridges the gap between finding jobs and actually managing them. It's not just showing data anymore, it's also helping you stay on top of your applications. Alright, the app's already doing everything we need. It scrapes, filters, tracks, and exports jobs without a hitch. But before wrapping things up, it's always worth giving the code a final pass. Even when everything's worked, there are usually bits of unused code, old functions, or layout quirks that can slow things down later. That's why we will tighten everything up and make the build as clean as possible. We'll give this prompt for Claude code. Please do comprehensive code cleanup and optimization. Remove any scripts, functions, imports, or variables that are not in use. Optimize the scraping logic for better performance and faster results. Add better error messages that help users understand what went wrong if something fails. 
also improve the UI as the header titles have weird gradient boxes. Improve the look overall. Please be careful when doing code cleanup. Make sure absolutely not to break any existing functionality we built. Plot code goes through the entire project, removing unused imports, optimizing performance, and cleaning up how the interface renders. This part might not look as exciting as building new features, but it's what keeps your app stable in the long run. Cleaner code means faster load times, fewer random bugs, and a structure that's easier to scale or hand off if you ever want to turn it into a real product. Once that's done, we can test everything again. Search, filter, open details, export, and everything runs quicker and smoother. The lag between searches is gone, results load instantly, and even the interface transitions feel tighter. Always remember that cleaning your code matters just as much as functionality when you're trying to build something that people will actually want to use. A few minutes ago, this was just an idea, but now it's a working AI-powered LinkedIn job scraper built entirely with Python and Claude code. And here's the thing, tools like this are exactly how people start making their first $10,000 with Python. Thanks for sticking around. Again, links are in the description if you want to build your own version. I'll see you in the next one.